Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brian and Jack with Simple Man's Comics where we are helping to amplify your comic collection through integrity and community. We do a lot of comic and pop culture related content on this channel. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Here we are. We are back. This is a different set. If you're expecting three up, three down this week, we told you hot and cold. We'll be back on a monthly basis and we are back hot and cold, but it's a special one. This one, since we are celebrating Thanksgiving this week, this is going to be a special Thanksgiving edition. Speaking of Thanksgiving, Jack, are you ready? I don't know, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely ready for that Thanksgiving dinner. I just don't know if I'm ready for the craziness that comes with the retail world post Thanksgiving. That I'm not sure if I'm ready for. Yeah, I know my, my wife's already dreading it. Um, she works in retail as well, just like you. So, yeah, everyone else enjoys Thanksgiving. People working in retail usually dread it. But either way, so the special edition for Thanksgiving, hot and cold, instead of the normal format, we have guest pickers that have been on the show before, and they're going to talk about what they're thankful for in comics. Not so much as hot, not so much as cold, special Thanksgiving edition of what they're thankful for in comics. And we're not going to hold it up any longer. We're going to start right now with Andy Tomberlin. Hey, what's up, Simple Man's Comics family? Andy here with the Indie Spotlight series over at comicbookinvest.com. Uh, my Thanksgiving pick is going to be Tomb of Dracula, the series. Uh, it's one that I love uh, personally, and I am currently trying to collect the whole run on them. I'm about, I'd say, right at 50% there. And, uh, man, it's, it's a lot of good books in that series. It's uh, great art, great writing, and it's to this day the best vampire story written. Uh, and, and I don't think anybody can really argue that. Uh, couple good books that are that are actually on the rise a little bit right now and, and cool ones to look out for uh 25 uh first appearance of an ally hannibal king um and 17 uh the first time blade was bitten by dracula uh and and all the books in general are seeing a little bit of an uptick right now uh and i know it's a lot of blade speculation driven um but nonetheless uh, you're seeing like 10 to 20 sales a day on the series which is, is, is pretty good, you know. Uh, like I say, Tomb of Dracula, that's my pick. Uh, what I'm thankful for in comics, and uh, I'm thankful for uh, family and everything else. So uh, hug yours, and uh, have a happy Thanksgiving. Everybody, take it easy. So there we have Andy Tomlin, comicbookinvest.com. He writes that article on their Indie Spotlight series. Now, we've mentioned on here how Jack and I have kind of separated from comicbookinvest.com. We've gone independent, full Simple Man's Comics. We used to contribute to comicbookinvest.com as well, but although we have gone our separate ways, we still remain friends with a lot of people there, which is why we have a lot of them doing videos. Andy Tomlin, great guy. He's talking to him at Dracula, but I want to talk Andy Tomlin real quick. One of the best people I've met online. We talk a lot. I can't say enough good things about him. If you haven't checked out his article, make sure you do so any Spotlight series. To him at Dracula, he says, best vampire series ever written. I tend to agree, but my favorite right now, of course, has to be The Savage Shores from Vault Comics. That's just, that might be because it's more recent. I still think Tomb of Dracula is a classic, but that's my pick. And love Andy Tomberlin. Hope you have a happy Thanksgiving, buddy. Yeah, Andy Tomberlin is uh, my brother from South Carolina. Um, he is, uh, like you said, just top notch. He is, in my opinion, the most knowledgeable, in-the-know, um, independent comics influencer, if you want to call it, on the market today. Um, and he does it for the true love of independent comics. Um, you know, he's not in any sort of a uh, paid position. He's He writes independently. He Everything he does is to try to give a spotlight, as his column says, on independent comics. The guy's doing the good work for the community. You got to love a guy like that. You got to appreciate it. And, Brian, his pick makes me think, isn't it almost tough when a run that you really love becomes hot because of, like, a movie news? You know, and, and it's like a double-edged sword. You become proud that something that you're into is now suddenly popular. But at the same point, man, now you're competing. So it's always – that's always that double-edged sword. But you know what? I think Tomb of Dracula is a great one. I think there's a lot of people collecting it right now. We get right into our next pick, and we are talking about Carolina Chris 2-6. It's your boy Carolina Chris, two six, 
Back at you again this week on Simple Man's Comics. And well, guys, what am I thankful for? I'm thankful for God himself for giving me one hell of a sense of humor, you know? And it rubbed off on my son. I'm thankful in comics, man, because comics give me a chance to explore things I didn't have as a kid, you know? As a kid, I didn't get to get comics. I didn't get to collect comics at all. But I grew up watching cartoons. I used to love... Uh, Thundercats, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Transformers, G.I. Joes, Voltron, I mean, uh, He-Man, I used to love all the cartoons. But I was born in the 70s, and as a kid, I remember watching The Hulk with Lou Ferrigno, and that was a good show, you know. So I guess you would say I'd love to give thanks to most of all to Stan Lee, because Stan Lee was actually inspiring my life as a child, you know. Not me just being a little, I was funny as a kid. So as a kid, uh, this elementary school I went to, Howard Elementary, we would have these contests each year. So dress up as your favorite TV character. And my favorite TV character that year just happened to be the Hulk. And I dressed up as the Hulk, painted my skin green and everything, and uh, actually won. But I was a skinny kid, so it's crazy. So it's like Stan Lee was inspiring my life as a kid. I didn't even know it. So I'd have to say the one book I have out of the comics I have as a kid, I didn't have any comics. I have thousands of comics now. The one that I cherish the most would have to be Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe 1 CGC 9.8 signed by Stan Lee and Rob Liefeld. <laughs> Rob Liefeld, you got to take the good to bad, huh? There's no spec on it that I know of, but it was signed by Stan Lee and it's the only one I have of him. And as a kid, you know, there was things I missed out on. Now I'm an adult. And I can afford the things I didn't have as a kid. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I miss my G.I. Joe toys and my Transformers and my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that I used to have battling in my front yard. But this is the one book I could not get rid of, the one I cherish the most, the one I'm thankful the most to have. So if you had to ask me out of all my comics which one I'd be the most thankful for, well, it'd have to be this. Because Stan Lee was a damn good inspiration on my life and I didn't even realize it. And, well, him and Three Stooges, but, uh, <laughs> I'm thankful for my mom. I'm thankful for God giving me the time he did to spend with my mom. I'm thankful for my family, my friends, my kids. I'm thankful for banana pudding, sweet iced tea. I'm thankful for Jack Bryan, Simple Man's Comics. I'm thankful for YouTube in general for giving me a platform to be able to express my goofy side. I'm thankful for everyone who actually enjoys my goofy side. So, guys, have a happy, happy Thanksgiving. Peace. All right, honey, Santa Claus is coming to town. So there we have Carolina Chris 26. Make sure you guys check out his YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description for that. In fact, I'll even put a card up right now that'll come on the screen if you're watching. So, a lot of great stuff. A lot of great stuff to be thankful for. But he talked about Incredible Hulk. I, I like to believe we're probably about the same age. In fact, I'm turning the big 4-2 this Friday on the 29th. So, born in late 70s, grew up in the 80s. I always identify as the 80s. That Incredible Hulk show. So many great shows then. A-Team, Dukes of Hazard. Talked about being thankful for Stan Lee. A lot of great picks there. That's why I love about this special video. Because we're learning more about the people and how we're thankful for that. And I'm thankful for Caroline and Chris. I keep saying Caroline, Chris, I'm just going to say Chris for all the videos, the friendship that we've made through Instagram, through YouTube, the community in general, but great pick, great video, and appreciate it, Chris. Yeah, I honestly, I can't say enough about Chris. He's brought some humor and some levity to the channel that I think is so needed, I and mean, uh, especially myself. I can get very serious talking on the mic about a lot of things, and um, I was at Heroes Con in Charlotte, and all of a sudden I heard, Bolo! And I turn around and it's my man, Chris, standing there. Um, it was great to meet him, albeit brief. Um, and, and I always love when he does a guest pick on the channel. I hope we have him on more in the future. So definitely thankful to have him. And I really love how he told, of all the books in his collection, I always appreciate when somebody picks a book that's personal to them more than a book of value. That really lets you know where somebody's heart is in their collection. So shout out to Chris. Um, thank you for everything you've done for the channel. And with that being said, we're going to roll right into the next pick from Brian McClay. What's going on, everybody? Brian McClay from CBSI Presents Tales from the Flipside here to give my Turkey Day video for the Hot and Cold Show. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Hopefully you get to spend it with the people that you love, people you enjoy being around, get to eat some good food, watch some good football maybe, talk some comics, who knows. I guess I'm thankful for 
Simple Man's Comics, obviously. Uh, really thankful for Simple Man's Comics. I'm thankful for what Jack and Brian are doing and letting me be part of this community. I'm really thankful for this community. Thankful for CBSI and ComicBookInvest.com and the community that was created within it and that started, kind of started this whole thing, in my opinion, for me. Uh, I got back into collecting through CBSI and I met some amazing people within that community. I met the Flipside guys. And uh, I want to thank them for letting me be part of their crew and let me, you know, create with them and do some really cool stuff. And I appreciate that. I'm thankful for the people that I've met uh, in the collecting community here in the Valley. I'm thankful for Absolute Geek Podcast. I'm thankful that I get to hang out with my buddies Kyle, Matt, and Corbin every Friday night and laugh and joke about nerd culture and comic books and make fun of Rob Liefeld. I'm really thankful for the podcast. I'm thankful that I get to hang out with my best friend, Keith, and interview cool people here in the Valley and talk about cool stuff and how to be a better person and how your life will be better because of it. Um, I'm thankful for this whole community through all of them. It kind of intertwines uh, and it's a cool thing. I'm really thankful for the viewers and the listeners, you guys. Thank you for being part of this community. Thankful for creating and you know telling us what you like and what you don't like and how to make it better and just for being cool in general. Really appreciate it. So uh, more than anything, I, I'm really excited about what is to come in the future with these shows and creating these shows and the people and the community that I meet within it. And I'm really thankful for the other shows that are part of this community. Um, there's a lot of them out there. Uh, I think that uh, there's some cool people making some really cool stuff out there. And uh, I'm really excited to, you know, do some stuff with them. So Brian McClay, another fantastic guy. I actually had the privilege of meeting him when I used to be on that Tales from Flipside podcast. They're on Monday nights, 930. Check them out on YouTube as well. And they've started moving not just into comics, but they're moving into box breaks. They're doing more card stuff. So if you're into that, definitely make sure you check out Tales from Flipside. Brian is one of the nicest guys. Last year at Christmas time, he sent each one of us from the Flipside podcast Little care gift that's personalized magnets. Mine had a bunch of Superman's comics logos on it. Um, the old muscle men, the little minifigs. But great guy and thankful that he's part of our community. Talk to him a couple times a week sometimes. But genuine, nice guy. Can't say enough good things about him. Yeah, Brian's a guy I've known through um, working with CBSI for a number of years now. But I've really only gotten to really know him in the last year or so. And uh, one of my favorite people because he's got that genuine attitude that he's always up. He's always happy. Um, he's one of those guys very well medicated out there. Um, so, you know, he's just always got a smile on his face. And um, a good dude to talk to, man, uh, when th this can become stressful for unnecessary reasons. And he always does a good job of putting things back into perspective. So, And I agree with what he said about community. We say it right in the channel, right? Integrity and community. Um, and it's something we mean. And yes, we're, we're talking about building our community, our Simple Men's Comics family. But at the same point, we are part of a larger community with the YouTube comic community. And um, shout out to all the creators out there, um, all of those people running YouTube channels who aren't just copy and pasting um, – various pieces of content from one form to another who are out here creating content uh, so much creativity goes on we are constantly in awe of the things that others are doing and it's making us constantly step our game up and it's why we work hard to bring you guys new shows and new programming on the channel every week right with that being said let's get right into the next pick which comes from mike morello hey everybody Mike Morello from CBSI's Cover Tunes uh, with my What I'm Thankful For pick for the week. I'm here with my, my, my new little man. This is Alex um, in, his, in his Batman gear. Um, comic fam, Alex. Alex, comic fam. Say hey. What's up, yo? Um, this week, I wanted to uh, sort of take a break from the actual books themselves and, and talk about the art and the artists um, because I'm most thankful to get to meet the artists that I get to meet at cons. Um, I love to have them do commissions and sketches and things for me and talk to them and maybe do interviews with them if I'm lucky. Um, but uh, I brought out a couple of my, my favorite pieces here, and, and I promise you that I'm not here to flex. I'm just really, really humbled to be able to own some of these pieces, and I just kind of wanted to share them with you guys. Um, 
<clears throat> the first is a piece by Enric Torres Pratt, who you may be familiar with from Vampirella cover fame from the 70s. Um, this piece is actually reused as a Vampirella piece, but was originally published this way on the Centaurus magazine, um, and then the figure was painted over. Um, but that's an original oil by, by Pratt. Um, and then uh, a Sienkiewicz piece. Um, it was great to be able to talk to Bill about this piece in person. Um, it was used for New Mutants Dead Souls number 6 uh, variant. Um, and it's just a beautiful, a beautiful piece. I'm, I'm really happy to own. I, I love Bill. Uh, I think his art is amazing, and I'm, I'm very humble to own that. Um, uh, one of my favorite modern pieces is uh, a piece that a lot of you may be familiar with, um, which is the Wonder Woman number 56 cover from Jenny Frisson. Um, if you're not familiar with her art, she does her art in two ways: um, a pencil sketch and then a full rendering. Both of them are done uh, by hand and then colored in Photoshop later. So it's really great to own both pieces. And, uh, and then, honestly, probably my favorite piece, just because I'm a sucker for Red Sonia. I've always wanted an original Frank Thorne page, and uh, I'm lucky enough to have page four, uh, pardon me, uh, page 23 from number four, um, which, I, which I love. Here's the page here, um, but here's the actual art. Um, and what's interesting about this piece is I also have the original color guide as well. Um, to go with it. It's just a great page from Frank. Obviously, I was not able to ever meet Frank Thorne, um, but I, I really hunted hard for a, a really good Red Sonja page. I love the character. I love his art on it. And uh, I was lucky enough to find the hand-done color guide for it. Um, and for those that know, um, Frank Thorne did his, did his own color guides. So that's done by Frank as well. So all these notes and everything in the margins are his as well. So it's really cool to have the pair together. Yeah, you like it too, buddy? Um, so these are just a few of my favorites. I love the idea of original art. I love getting to meet these people. Um, you can do OA in a variety of ways. It doesn't have to be expensive. It can be covers. It can be, you know, pages, published stuff, but can also just be a quick con sketch. It can be a commission. Um, and it's just a really great way to, to really get into the, to the hobby, um, deep rather than just the books, rather than just reading them. Um, I think this is a, a really cool step into the kind of the deeper depths of, of comics. I'm super thankful to own this stuff. I'm thankful to all the creators that create the stuff that we love. I am thankful for all of you guys out there in the community keeping this hobby alive and the next generation right here. So thanks, everybody. You have a great week and happy Thanksgiving. So first off, I want to say happy Thanksgiving to Mike in a fantastic video. I want to say happy Thanksgiving to the little one, Alex, who's absolutely adorable. Kind of makes me miss my kids at that age. But then if I think about it long enough, I realize that I'm not ready to start over and I'm fine oh, with I, my kids being older now. I, I do the same thing all the time. It's always like, oh, and then I think of like no sleep and all Yeah, that you stuff. go, man, man, it would be nice to have another one. And then you're like, no, wait a minute. So, but adorable. And he's going to be inheriting some great comics and original art. I love this pick, original art. We don't talk about it too much. We mention it. It's a, it's a, I don't want to say niche. It's just certain people love original art. And he's got a great collection. And the great thing about it is it fits this pick of what you're thankful for because a lot of them hold sentimental value or there's something that ties some emotional feeling. So you not only do you have a great collection, but you have something that you can look at it on your wall and go and think about to the exact moment, the exact time. It's almost like music in your life type thing. You can look at the art and go, oh, that was from this time period. Um, but great pick. And I like Alex the most. Yeah, yeah, man. He's adorable, especially in those Batman PJs. But yeah, I, I want to say shout out to Mike, my paisan. Um, it's been fun working with him over the last year on a lot of different things with the channel, CBSI, and um, our new venture, toyinformer.com. Um, Mike's got a column called Mike's Closet, where if you think that that art is flexing, you haven't seen anything yet the guy's toy collection is out of this world um but i've said for a long time right i've been deciding whether to, i want to get in the original art game but i've always been so intimidated by like how do you start where do you start i had the pleasure of watching mike negotiate and buy some original art in charlotte at heroes con and it really kind of schooled me in a way i don't know if he realized he was just buying his art but i don't think he wa realized i was eagle eye watching uh, and I feel more prepared now for what I, the kind of stuff I would like to do and what I'd like to pay. Um, and it was it was really an educational for me. So shout out to Mike. I'm thankful to have gotten to know him this year. Um, 
great guy and a real asset to not just the comic community, but we're talking OA, we're talking toys. The guy, the guy is an absolute collectibles monster. Yeah, so thank you. And once again, happy Thanksgiving to Mike. But speaking of Toy Informer, we got another pick here. And it comes from Peter Renna. What's up, everybody? This is Peter Renna. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these. But uh, I'm a writer over at ToyInformer.com. I do uh, Vintage Market Watch and Catch a Wave Transformers. And uh, here to do my little part for our special Thanksgiving episode here. So first, I'd like to thank Brian and Jack and Simple Man's Comics for having me back. I mean, those guys are killing it every week, giving you know, top-notch content you know, day in and day out. All the while, they're also contributing over at Toy Informer. So check out their articles over there, too, along with uh, Mike Morello, who I'm sure is on this uh, video somewhere along the way. So outside of that, what else am I thankful for this uh, season as regards to comics? I guess I'm thankful for my Hand of the King bottle opener here to get me going. But I would have to say that I'm most thankful for Jim Lee and his X-Men run. I still remember that day when I first picked up that uh, issue 275, the... Sorry about that, I just needed a drink. That uh, gatefold cover, this particular issue right here, I just saw it, picked it up, folded it out, and just had to bring it home. And uh, with that, uh, a lifelong X fan was hooked. Uh, I had to go back and go grab everything that I could to his you know, first X-Men book here, to this, these two good uh, Psylocke covers that he did, great run there, to this one of my favorites here, this uh, throwback with Cap and Black Widow. This is just, you know, Excellent, excellent work. I just, Jim Lee, it's no uh, secret, he's one of my favorite artists, if not my top favorite artist. But, uh, yeah, it was just something about that run just had me hooked. I mean, I got the second print here. It's just that uh, that galactic, you know, cosmic aspect, I guess, tied in with the Silver Surfer that I was reading at the time, too. It just really got me into it. But just, look, these covers are just awesome. And uh, I just kept picking up book after book. And uh, now, you know, I got the entire X-Men run probably going back to about 87 to present and then a smattering of those older issues. You know, I don't have the big boys quite yet, but, you know, it's something to work towards. You know, work towards completing that run. But uh, that is what I would have to say I'm most thankful for, you know, this comic season, I guess, is, you know, especially with uh, Hickman's run on X-Men, bringing everything all full circle and bringing the X-Men back to the forefront. And uh, that excellent animated show back on Disney+, Plus. it just seems everything's back to X, and it feels like the good old days again. So I got a little nostalgic, so I had to pull out my X-Men uh, Jim Lee books. So uh, with that... Uh, that's my uh, what I'm thankful for, I guess, uh, in the comic world. So there we have Peter talking about ToyInformer.com. If you're a fan of toys, collecting, nostalgia, make sure you check out ToyInformer.com. Also, he writes Usual Suspects and Dollar Bin Digging articles on ComicBookInvest.com, so you can check them out there as well. But here we are. He's thankful for that Jim Lee X-Men run. That's one of those iconic runs, especially for the demographic or the age group that's, I would say, almost just behind me. Like... I was born in 77. When you get into like the 82, 84 birth years, they seem to be higher on Jim Lee, like I think, like yourself, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, like, Jim, obviously, the Jim Lee pick connects with me. Now, for me, it's a little, almost a little later. Um, it's that just X Men run. Um, shout out to Uncanny X Men, but X Men is what really resonates with me on a large scale. Um, I, you know, I distinctively remember the re-release of those series is where you've got X-Men 1 and X-Force 1 coming from Liefeld, and they were going head-to-head, -head, um, and I loved them both. So I, this pick, I think, resonates, and I love how the nostalgia factor of this series is coming back around for a lot of people. But I also, i I, I got to say, I'm thankful for Peter's another one um, who has done incredible work this year, a guy who probably doesn't get half the credit he deserves. Um, he t works tirelessly to highlight books that others don't, to talk about books um, that are in dollar bins that are pre-spiked, not books that are in dollar bins that have already spiked. Um, and he's been ahead of the curve on a lot of books this year. He also, with his usual suspects column, has talked about books that you know had been talked about but maybe haven't been for a while and have been sitting there dormant at, at some solid prices. And uh, he's schooled a lot of people to, to how that whole cycle of pricing works. And I think that those columns are essential reads if you you know you know you're trying to you know get your collection as cheap as possible or resell um, or speculate any of those types of things. I think his columns are absolutely essential. And then the work he's doing on ToyInformer.com right now. If you haven't been able to check out the site, if you're a toy fan, 
is out of this world. This guy, though, if you're in a chat with him, could speak in nothing but gifs. He could he could have an entire conversation and post nothing but gifs in there. Right. So I want to thank all those people that submitted a video. I'll tell you right now, every single one of those that submitted a video, I have not met in real life. I just met Jack in real life just yeah. recently at Baltimore Comic Con. But also, every single one of those, I feel like I've known my whole life. So I want to say thank you to everyone that submitted those picks today. And if you guys were here looking for that real comic content that we normally provide, we wanted to mix it up. It's Thanksgiving. We wanted people to talk about what they're thankful for. And it gives people a chance to see the person behind the camera or the person writing the article. So I thought this was a great, great idea. But we still have what we're thankful for. So, Jack, I'm going to let you go first. Well, I am thankful for, first and foremost, Brian Yu giving me the opportunity to come and be a part of this channel. When the year started, there's no way I would have imagined I'd be doing this, especially on this scale. Um, it was something you and I discussed. Obviously, I was dragging my feet on it. Uh, I had those normal, like, nervous fears that people have going into something like this. What if they don't like me? I mean, my equipment's not good enough, which it wasn't, and uh, still isn't. But it, all of those things, and you know, you kind of pushed me get out there and put yourself out there. You believed in me um, when a lot of other people that we worked with and in our community maybe didn't. And I, I will forever be indebted in you because obviously I've come on the mic and I've been honest. This has been a tough year for me personally. I lost my dad, and it's why I, I'm forever thankful for the community because I lost my dad and I got on the mic two days later. Um, I, my relationship of 13 years when my kid's mother ended, um, that was a, extremely difficult, is extremely difficult. Two days later, I got on the mic. Um, I was in the hospital today, um, you know, highly dedicated, highly medicated. Um, but whenever things like that happen, I've been able to come to this place, talk to you, you all out there, and feel that sense of family that we talk about when we say, um, you know, that we're, we're about community and integrity. That community is is so, so thick on our end. Um, when we say Simple Men's Comics family, we mean it. Um, the support that we've gotten from those who are behind us is incredible. We, it hasn't even been a year, Brian, that we've been doing this as a team. And you look at where we are from where we started. I'm so thankful for everything that we've accomplished. And no matter how much I want to sometimes get frustrated and say, oh, man, we should be have this many subscribers or I want to beat this YouTube channel or because we're competitive, right? We want we want to be the best. I, I always try to remember and be thankful for the January when we started this and I shot the first ever bolo show on my cell phone holding it like this and uh you know and i'm so i'm absolutely thankful comics have been great all of that's been great um family's been awesome but i am thankful the most for you and this community and i don't know you know i'm a believer in god and everything happens for a reason but i don't know so i don't know where i would be today if i wasn't doing this and i know that that can sound sappy but it's it is the absolute god's honest truth yeah, I mean, it's been fun. I mean, I remember texting you saying, hey, you ready to do your bolo show? And oh, I don't know. And I was like, don't procrastinate, just create. And that's for everyone out there. If you guys, I mean, yeah. all you need is a cam and a mic. If you want to do YouTube, do YouTube. Don't sit there and um, say, oh, I can't. You got to start somewhere. Just get out there and start creating. There's enough space for everyone to have a YouTube channel. And uh, by all means, the more the merrier because it is one big community. i I mean, I want to start off, it's going to sound cliche, but it's definitely true. First of all, I'm thankful for God. I mean, without him, I wouldn't be here. I want to thank my wife who supports me in this. I want to thank the fact that I have a job that allows me to do this and not worry about money. So I work full time and this is this is fun for me. Um, I want to thank the whole YouTube community. I want to thank all the other channels. There's so many out there to name. Um, I want to thank... The subscribers, the viewers, the people that comment, the people are there week in, week out that we've gotten to know through YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, all those so thankful for. 
I'm also really, really thankful for the Patreon members. They're like the insider community. They're like the extended family of Simple Man's Comics. Between Discord chat, between Hangouts, between DMs, between Facebook Messenger. Great group of guys and gals. Really appreciate them. And I hold them all dear to my heart. And most of all, I'm thankful for the comic hobby in general that gives us this platform to come on here, talk about what we like, talk about characters we like, talk about stories we like, and YouTube that gives us the avenue to do it. There's not a big comic community in my small town. There's comic book fans, but nothing like the avenue that YouTube gives you to sit there and talk to people. And all the friends I've made from all the other YouTube communities, I'm really, really thankful for. And I'm thankful for my kids. I love my kids to death. I see myself in them. I see the frustration in them sometimes, but happy to have them i love vicariously reliving through them because i'm just a big kid not gonna lie i mean my wife just gave me a mega constructs castle gray skull for my birthday and it was like the smile on my face i was elated super happy but don't want to go on too long thank you thank you for watching this and do us a favor put in the comment this thanksgiving what you guys are thankful for because we love to hear everyone this is community. We talk about community and integrity. And this is community at the utmost. So thank you guys for watching this. And we will be back next week with the regular three up, three down again. But tomorrow night we'll have the Bolo Show. It might be Thanksgiving, but we still have comics to talk about. So we Absolutely. will see you then. Right, Jack? Yep, we will see you. We don't miss.